hi guys welcome back to my channel in today's video we shall be learning all that we need to know about fabric grains and grain lines often time you hear grain lines fabric grain when we draft pattern always endeavor to put the appropriate grain lines as required what are these fabric grains how do we identify them which of them is the most important and how do we go about putting grain line instructions appropriately on our pattern pieces for us to be able to place those pattern accurately on our fabric which affect the fit and the overall look of these garments. Before we go into the main class, we at La Perry are saying compliments of the season, Merry Christmas and Happy New Year in advance. If today is your first time on this channel, a big welcome to you. This is La Perry College of Fashion YouTube sewing channel and I am Omotola Denigai. For all of our subscribers, I'm saying thank you all and for all those lovely comments that you do send, I so much appreciate you guys. If you are yet to subscribe to this channel, I'm appealing to you, kindly do subscribe and I'm sure you wouldn't regret subscribing to this channel. And as you subscribe, don't forget to hit that notification bell which notifies you each time new videos get dropped on this channel. I also want to remind us that our paid WhatsApp online classes still continues monthly. One thing all of our participants can testify to is how detailed and clear the videos for these classes have been. For more details about this, kindly contact the WhatsApp number displayed on the screen and watch out for our flyers as they come out. Back to the tutorial for today. For us designers, what we make use to produce our designs are primarily fabrics. There are different types of these fabrics and these fabrics can be classified based on the sources of the fiber being used. We can classify based on the fiber content and composition. We can also classify this fabric based on the mode of construction of these fibers. When we classify based on source, we'll be talking about natural and man-made talking about wool and cotton, which are from plants and animals. This classification affects the smell of these fabrics, their water retention capacity, and the way they react when these fabrics come in contact with fire. On the other hand, when we classify fabrics based on their fiber content, we are talking about the percentage of wool, seal, cotton, or rayon being used in the process of producing these fabrics. And this affects the texture of the fabric, the feel when they touch the skin, and the way they drip. Now talking about the mode of construction, we are talking about how the fibers were arranged while these fabrics were being produced. This classification of fabrics based on the way the fiber were arranged in the process of making this fabric is what will be leading us to today's topic, which is fabric grain and grain lines. When we classify fabric based on the way the fiber were arranged, we will have woven fabric, knitted fabric, and meshed fabric. A larger percentage of the fabrics that we use as designers are woven and a good understanding and analysis of these categories of fabrics will help us to ensure that our garments hang nicely on our body just the way we want them to appear. Now, for woven fabrics, the fibers are arranged lengthwise and crosswise like this giving rise to lengthwise grain and the crosswise grain. So at the intersection of the lengthwise and crosswise, we now have another grain line called the buyer's grain. The lengthwise grain are usually the first sets of grains, the fibers to be laid, while the crosswise, also known as the field, are later placed on it like so. 
the lengthwise grain are usually the strongest grain while this might still be weaker than this the lengthwise grain when you have fabrics like this the lengthwise grain are found parallel to the self edge this is the self edge when i say self edge i mean the well finished edge like this and sometimes you can have your self edge with prints like this for you to be able to identify easily and sometimes you can have your self edge having another color like this printed and yet the color is different from the main body that is our self edge and usually the lengthwise grain are found parallel to this self edge so any grain line you have like so parallel like this you could see it is the lengthwise grain while these other ones are cross are the crosswise grain you can see as i'm shredding we can see most of the fabrics that we use are woven it's just that some fabrics are tightly woven than some Take for instance, this is my African print now. If you look at the surface, you will not be able to see the line saw fiber being used because this is tightly woven. But as I stretch this way, the lines become more visible. I can see my lengthwise grain and crosswise grain coming out more visible like so. But for this particular sample that I'm using, this is very visible and porous. And more so, when I turn it to the wrong side, it gets more clearer. Like this, I can see my lengthwise grain as well as my crosswise grain as arranged in the process of being constructed. It's one thing to draft pattern. Another thing is to know how to place those patterns appropriately on fabric because these grain lines do affect the way our fab i mean our garment comes out it is usually best to place our patterns along the lengthwise grain which is the strongest and always have the least amount of stretch like so however sometimes we are forced to place our patterns crosswise probably depending on the texture print that you have on the fabric or because of some other factors. So we can simply define fabric grains as the direction of fibers in woven fabric. It's only in woven fabrics that we talk about fabric grain. That's the first thing we need to establish. Another thing we need to establish is the fact that there are usually three grain lines the lengthwise grain, which are the strongest, the least amount of stretch, and the crosswise grain, which are also known as the fill, and you will have stretch, in, I mean, a substantial amount of stretch along this part. Then we now have the third grain line, which is the bias. When we want to fold that fabric, we could fold like this. That means we are folding along the lengthwise grain. It's also possible to fold our fabric this way, which is along the crosswise grain. But when we fold our fabric diagonally like this, making the lengthwise grain to rest on the crosswise grain like this, then we now have the bias. And when you have bias, what happens? You could see you have the maximum amount of stretch like this. This is a non stretchy fabric, as you can see, it's a static fabric. It's non stretchy. Yet, when you fold diagonally like this on bias, what happens? You are going to be having that fabric stretching out this way. Another thing I would like to establish is the fact that our self edge helps us to identify these grain lines easily. When you are able to identify your self edge, the first thing will be to identify the lengthwise grain, which are parallel to the self edge. Then automatically, anyone across will be the crosswise grain. 
And if your fabric does not have any well-defined self edge, probably it has been cut off in the process of cutting, what you should do is you need to pull the fabric at different directions to be able to identify the most stable out of the direction, the grain line. And when you're able to identify like this now, I'll know that this is probably my lengthwise or the crosswise because both the lengthwise and crosswise for this particular fabric is static. But when I pull like this and having this result, I know that this must be the buyer's grain. So that's how to identify. Then why is this grain line important? Then take a look at this. Here is a sample of fabric, and as you can see, this is my self edge well finished like so, and I have this pattern. Now, we have been told that it's best to place our pattern in accordance with our self edge. Here's my self edge, and I'm having my lengthwise gain, and we have been told that it's best to place our pattern along the lengthwise grain. So I'll go ahead now and fold and I'll be placing this pattern on it and I'll cut it out. So I'll be securing it with pin and I'll go ahead to cut it out. So cutting it out, this is what we we'll have, by the time we we'll spread it out. And since this fabric is striped, we could see the direction of the stripes like this. Then still using the same fabric, this time around, I'm going to be folding the fabric crosswise. Let me trim off this end. So now I'm going to be folding like this. Here is the self edge on the other side once again. The first one I did, I folded along the self edge, the lengthwise grain. Now I'll be folding this way, which is the crosswise. So let me cut it out at this point. So I'll go ahead to place the same pattern that I used like so, and I'll use it to cut out the fabric. So cutting it out, this is what I have. As against the first one that we did, can you see? This is now crosswise. So I'll go ahead now and still fold diagonally which is now on the bias. And for this, here is my self edge once again, the lengthwise grain. And I'll be folding it to rest on the crosswise grain, which is folding diagonally. And I'll be placing the same pattern that we used. I'll be cutting this other piece out same way. So this is a, what I'll be having for the third pattern. Same fabric, same pattern, but now we are going to be having three different looks of the garment now, like so. Can you see? This is the first one that we did lengthwise grain. This is the second one, crosswise grain, and this is the third one, on bite. So you can see how the same pattern, same fabric has produced three different looks. So depending on what you intend to achieve, you all need to be careful how you place your pattern on fabric. If this was what I wanted and I did not understand my fabric grain, and I go ahead to just fold my fabric, cutting this out, this will have been an error. Sometimes you could intentionally want this, so you want to produce it like so. Sometimes you could intentionally want this, I want to produce like so. And what if this fabric was a plain fabric? Something plain that we, does not have lines, stripes, that will have guided one. That means one will have gone ahead to cut this fabric like so. 
probably you intended it to be like this lengthwise bit, but because it's a plain fabric, you wouldn't know they have done a narrow folding it on buyers or on the crosswise bit. It's not in the process of joining, fixing your zipper, or constructing your dart. You now run into issues. Take for instance, you have gone ahead to cut your fabric like this on buyers, and this was meant to be a fitted garment, and you are, cons you are going to be constructing your dart like so you can imagine in the process of constructing your dart now the actual length of this dart this is actually three and a half by the time you need to construct your dart now and placing it on the machine to so what happens because this is unbiased and when you fold on bias your fabric tends to straight this length of dart by the time you finish the construction might be up to four inches you can also imagine probably this is your back piece which you need to attach zipper you'll be installing zipper at the center back like this for you to construct i mean for you to install your zipper along this part which is true bias now you will run into problem and sometimes you'll be wondering i've done my pattern very well i've placed it on the fabric the same measurement and everything but while sewing one side now will get longer the other side will not be equal or you can imagine probably you're cutting your fabric now you have done one piece like this on bias and cutting the other back piece now let me cut this into two and one of the back piece is on bias while the other back piece is lengthwise you know if this were to be a plain fabric it wouldn't be obvious you wouldn't notice the difference and by the time you now want to sew or install your zipper you'll not be struggling one will not be getting longer while the other one remains tight so to avoid such problems and sometimes when you put them on you'll notice that you do not feel comfortable inside some garments you keep adjusting 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 these are as a result of wrong placement of pattern on fabric they are not usually in accordance with the grain line Having understood the relevance of the understanding of fabric grain, how then do we now put grain line instructions on our pattern for onward placement on fabric? We do this by putting on our patterns line like this, line like this, that will have this is the symbol for grain line. I will put this on our pattern in such a way that it will be parallel to our center front or our center back. And which will also be parallel to the folded edge of our fabric, whether our self edge or probably we are folded our fabric like this. This line must be parallel to the folded edge of our fabric or our self edge as the case might be. Even if I have an irregular shape, something like this, probably this is the particular design I want to create and I've drawn my style line like this. Before I cut out this piece, which is going to be having irregular written in the shape in the outline, I will have first of all drawn out my grain line this way so that while placing on my fabric i can do it appropriately and by the time i cut out that pattern piece like so i can simply place it on my fabric this way making sure that this line is parallel to the lengthwise grain which most times are the strongest grain and the least stretch so that the shape of my pattern is still maintained without losing shape. However, there are different types of fabric and sometimes some of these fabrics might not actually follow this rule of your lengthwise grain being static and the least stretch. But your understanding of how pattern are supposed to be played, which means you'll be looking at for the part that is very very strong and with the least stretch to place your pattern appropriately on fabric i do hope with this 
few explanations. You now have more insight to what fabric grains are and how to go about putting those green line instruction and the importance of fabric green. For more application of this knowledge and how to place appropriately on fabric, you could contact us for the paid class. If this video has been helpful, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as usual. And you have yet to subscribe to our channel, kindly do so. Like and share this video so that others might join us on this platform. You may also follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. All the links are already in the description box below. Thank you so much. Until my next video, bye for now. La Perry College of Fashion, raising professionals.